everybody. Welcome to our uh, fifth installment of our Thursday night live tastings. Um, before we get going, I just want to uh, let you guys know what uh, what happened with our schedule. So, um, because we've uh, we've offered the uh, the virtual wine tasting survival kit, um, we've been inundated with orders for those things, and and we want to make sure that people have a chance to get those wines delivered before we tuck into uh, into the six wines that are in that case. Um, so we had planned to do Omerta today, which is our rosé. We're going to put that one off until next week. Um, and so to fill, uh, to fill the time tonight, I thought we could do a vertical tasting of the Syndicate. Um, the Syndicate, uh, this is where it all began for us. Um, back in 2012, that was the first year that we made wine, we made 100 cases of the Syndicate, and that's it. Um, our, just to give you some frame of reference, our production now is just shy of 2,000 cases. So um, we've come a fairly fairly long way in, in a few short years. Um, but Syndicate's where it all started, so uh, this is actually a, a good fun night for me to, uh, to go back through a few vintages here. Um, and also, for, for any new viewers that might be on that maybe don't know a whole lot about our story, I thought I'd just give a quick overview of, of uh, what black market means to us and, uh, and, and how we came up with that name. Um, so being originally from Alberta, uh, we used to have to basically smuggle wines across our provincial border. Um, and when we would come out to the Okanagan for vacations, we would load up our car with, uh, with cases and cases of wine and then uh, basically just drive as fast as we could across the provincial border hoping we didn't get pulled over by the police. Um, and so we said, well, if, if ever we're going to open our own winery, we have to call it Black Market because that epitomizes our relationship with, uh, with BC. Um, all right, now on to the syndicate. Uh, there, there's meaning behind this name as well. Um, so a syndicate is basically, it's a, a group of people working together for some sort of common purpose. Um, and when you, you look at the, uh, the age-old practice of blending in, uh, in Bordeaux, France, um, the whole purpose of, of bringing those separate elements together, those separate varietals, is to, is to get them working together to elevate something. Um, you know that, that saying, the, the sum of parts is, is, the sum is greater than, than its parts. Um, that's my belief as far as blends go. I think that when you, when you pair the right grapes together in the right proportions, um, you bring out the best of, of, of everything and uh, ultimately you end up with a better wine. So, uh, a little bit of a history as to, uh, as to why we came up with the name Syndicate and, uh, and what it means to us and our blend. Okay, um, a vertical tasting, what is that? Uh, a vertical tasting is um, when you drink multiple vintages, so different vintages of the same wine. So in this case, we have three different years of the same wine, which is the Syndicate. We've got our, our 2015, 2016, and 2017. If you were to do a horizontal tasting, uh, let's say you're doing a horizontal of Chardonnay, um, you'd have the same vintage, uh, but different producers from that same vintage. Um, so what we're doing tonight is a vertical tasting, and uh, it's actually kind of fun to go back and see how wines have, have developed and, and aged in, in bottle. Um, before we can really understand uh, what's in these glasses and what's in these bottles, uh, it's good to kind of give some context for what the, the vintage was like. So what were the growing conditions, the weather, all those things that um, impart uh, character on the fruit, which then results in, in flavors and aromas in the bottle. Um, there were some pretty marked differences between these three years. Um, 2015 was one of the warmer years on record. Um, we had an early bud break, uh, really, really warm and dry spring, which is good for, for fruit set and for flowering. Um, the summer was hot and dry, uh, and the, the harvest period, so we're talking sort of late August, early September through to November, um, was relatively dry as well. Um, and, and so what that does is it that was really sort of optimal um, optimal uh, ripening conditions um, for the fruit uh, and then with with there being a dry harvest period that's really really important because it, 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 re it lowers or reduces the disease pressure on the grapes um, if you have uh, moisture and rain or cool temperatures with dew and that sort of stuff um, you you're increasing your chances of having um, some disease pressures like powdery mildew downy mildew things like that rot on trough 
Um, so 2015 was great because uh, we didn't have those, those challenges. Um, the challenge we did have in that year though was uh, it was a pretty bad year for wildfires. Um, and so there was uh, uh, a number of localized fires, uh, particularly in the Southern Okanagan. Um, and in some cases, some vineyards burned and, and uh, fires were right up to the uh, perimeters of, uh, of those vineyards. Um, if we look at 2016, um, that was uh, probably, the, I think, the warmest spring in recent history, maybe 15 or 20 years. Um, but then middle of June, everything kind of came to a grinding halt and uh, July saw temperatures uh, not much warmer than 20, the low 20s for most of that month. Um, which uh, is important because that's kind of the, a peak part of, of the, the grape growing process. That's where veraison happens when the, the berries really start to ripen. Um, so those cool temperatures uh, really slowed down the accumulation of sugar in the berries. August was hot though, which was good because it helped recover uh, some of that lost, uh, that lost heat. Um, and then the harvest period was fairly long. So uh, uh, moderate temperatures, but a long duration. I think there were some, some vineyards that were still being picked in November. Uh, a good thing about 2016 was there wasn't a lot of uh, smoke in the air because there weren't a lot of forest fires in the area. So um, that's good, but overall that vintage was generally regarded as a slightly cooler one. So you're seeing um, lower alcohol levels in general, not in all cases, but generally speaking, some lower alcohol levels um, and very balanced wines. Uh, and then 2017, um, that was uh, a bit of a later spring. So bud burst was about three weeks later than the previous couple of years. Um, and the spring was cool and wet, um, which uh, can have some implications for, for fruit set and, uh, and the early developing of the berries. Um, but again, the summer was, uh, was fairly warm and dry. Um, if you remember 17 though, there was uh, some pretty bad uh, wildfires, uh, not a lot, in the Okanagan, but there was some pretty pretty significant fires in California, Oregon, and Washington. So we had that really high atmospheric level smoke, um, which uh, in, in some cases can be okay because it has the effect of moderating temperature a little bit. So you have really, really hot temperatures, um, the berries will start and, and the grapevines will start to shut down around 35 degrees Celsius. So um, if you have a really, really hot temperatures, that high atmospheric smoke will actually lower that by a couple degrees, which can be quite good. Um, so that's just, that's the three vintages in a nutshell. Um, and you'll see as we start to taste through these, um, how, how some of those differences in the year will manifest themselves into the bottle. Um, just a quick side note on, on vintage. Um, there, there are lots of wineries that are, are trying to produce the same wine year in and year out. Uh, I, I'm not one of those winemakers. Um, I, I embrace vintage variation uh, to its fullest. Um, I think if you want to be honest and true to the, the materials that you're working with, which are the grapes, you have to let Mother Nature shine through. Um, every year we, she gives us something different, whether it's uh, rain or no rain, hot temperatures, cool temperatures, short season, long season. Um, all of those things that, that manifest throughout that growing season um, are going to help tell the story of that wine. Uh, and I don't want to mask that in any way. So, so there's you know, some, some proponents of, of making the same wines year in year out. Uh, may not appreciate that, but uh, I'm, I'm a pretty firm believer that you have to let the vintage shine through and just embrace the differences that you get. Okay, um, before we tuck into these wines, um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the varietals that we're using. Um, they're slightly different in each year and the proportions are different. Um, but let's maybe start with a, a high level overview of those main four varietals, which are Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Petit Verdot. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the general characteristics of those grapes so that uh, as we start to peel the, the layers back of each of these wines, um, you'll have that reference point. Um, okay, so Merlot, um, it's uh, generally a medium bodied wine. Um, the, fruit or the fruit characters are, are really dominated by, by cherry and plum. Um, for some sort of woody or spicy notes, you'll get, uh, you can get chocolate, you can get vanilla, um, some sort of savory herbs like bay leaf, um, those will tend to show up through, uh, through Merlot. 
Cabernet Franc, uh, you're looking more for the red berries, strawberries, raspberries. Um, it tends to be a slightly lighter body wine than Merlot or the, the Cap Sauve and, and Petit Bordeaux. Um, and one fairly dominant character of, of Cab Franc uh, is uh, bell pepper or chili pepper. So you'll get some greenness, some fresh green pepper notes, um, which are, are, are expected for that varietal. Um, and then on, on the earthy side of it, uh, often you'll get a crushed gravel or a wet stone sort of uh, character to uh, Cabernet Franc. Uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is, uh, is a little bit different. Um, it's a fuller body wine, generally speaking. Um, look for your, your darker fruits, black cherry, black currant, um, those, those more sultry, uh, richer fruit flavors. Um, and you'll also start to get um, more of a cedar or a baking spice note from, uh, from Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, oftentimes uh, you can pull out some graphite notes or sort of pencil shadings, that sort of stuff. And then um, Petit Verdot, uh, this is one of my favorite varietals and, and I think it's the secret sauce to the syndicate blend. But um, again, look for, for black cherry uh, and plum flavors, uh, similar in, in some respects to Merlot. Um, but what Petit Verdot offers that many of the other varieties don't is, is some floral notes like lilac and violet. Um, and once you know that, that, that they're, they're part of this blend, you'll be able to start pulling those things out for sure. Um, there's not a ton of herbaceous notes to Petit Verdot. Um, if, you, if you do pull something out, it might be something like sage. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, blending component because it brings brings that floral component and it brings richness in color, it brings full on tannins. Um, so a really, really good blending component. Um, with, uh, with your typical Bordeaux style blend or Meritage, whatever you want to call it, um, generally Petit Verdot is used in a small proportion. Um, if it's used at all, it's, it's 1%, 2%, maybe 4 or 5% maximum. Um, but we tend to use a significant proportion, uh, sometimes 15-20%. Um, and it's because I, I love what it, it, it brings to the blend from the structural side and I really love that floral component. Um, Alright, so that's a quick overview of the four varietals that we use. Now let's uh, maybe get into the wines and uh, we can taste through these and see what we can pull out. Um, so we're going to start with our 2015 vintage. Um, this is a blend of, uh, so in this year we actually have all four varieties. So we've got 32% Merlot, 29% Cabernet Franc, 24% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 15% Petit Verdot. Um, this wine spent 18 months in barrel, uh, and in, in the same for all of these years, it's about uh, a third to 35, 40% new barrels. Um, well, maybe I'll, talk, I'll touch on the barrel stuff a little bit later. Um, so let's uh, give this a swirl. I'm not sure how many of you guys have the 15 still. There's probably not many stores that have that left, but uh, if you have purchased it and have been patient, um, this wine is drinking at its peak right now. All right, so this is uh, definitely uh, a fairly aromatic uh, um, in the glass. Uh, lots of, of flavors and aromas uh, coming out of the glass. Um, I would say it's on the riper side. Um, look at the color, it's fairly, fairly dark. You can tell there's good body here. And uh, for, for aromas, you know, definitely the, the black cherry, um, the currant, those dark red fruits, some plum, even maybe a little bit of, uh, yeah, pomegranate. That's that sort of brighter red red note. Um, and then you definitely pick up on some of the oak influence here. A little bit of cedar and, uh, and, and look for those, uh, those floral tones and see if you can pull those out. So definitely, like I said, on that riper side. So this is, uh, this is a few years old now. The, 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 the fruit is really, really shining through. Um, the tannins on this, I would say, are firm, but they're supple. 
Uh, they're not grippy. Um, they're definitely softening. Uh, this was a, a grippier wine a couple years ago, but with some bottle aging, those tannins are mellowing out a little bit. Um, I'd say the acid is probably about medium on this one. Um, you know, that's the hallmark of, of wines from this region, but it's not, uh, it's not overpowering. It's definitely very, very well balanced right now. Yeah, well, same, the same fruits that you're smelling, you're generally going to pick up on the flavor, but they might be in, in different uh, um, concentrations. Um, I'm definitely getting more plum um, on the palate than I was uh, on, on the nose, um, but you're still finding the cherry, the currant, um, and I'm, I'm not tasting a lot of oak on this. It's fairly well integrated. I'm drinking really, really nicely right now. All right, so that's for 2015. Let's move into 2016. Um, so if we think back to our, our, our vintage comparison, um, probably a slightly cooler year on average. So this wine isn't, uh, it, it's not as aromatic as the 15. It's a bit more restrained. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not, not jumping out of the glass as much as that 15 is, but I'm still, still getting um, that cherry, maybe a bit more strawberry. Now, one one thing with this this blend here so in our 16 we're we're only looking at three varietals um we've got merlot at about 50 percent cabernet franc at 37 and petit verdot at 13. so we're, we're definitely seeing more influence from the cabernet franc which is where that strawberry strawberry note is coming from and i'd say there's a little bit of uh of, of like uh tobacco leaf in here Okay, some pretty obvious differences between our, our, our riper, more luscious 15 to the 16. Um, yeah, it's restrained on the palate as well. There's definitely fruit there still, but um, it's not as expressive. Uh, it's still kind of wound up a little bit tight. Um, it's maybe not quite as full body as the 15. I'd say medium, medium to full body. Um, but the tannins are definitely grippier on this one. They're firm. They're, you feel them. Um, they, they kind of... Have that drying sensation on the sides of your mouth um, but the flavors are, are all there they're just not quite as expressive yet so uh, if I if I had to say which of these two so far is drinking better definitely the 15 is, is in it's it's coming into its peak now the 16 I would say you know two years more in bottle I think would, uh, would do that one um, very well all right uh, on to the 17 which is our current release um, uh, very similar uh, blend to our 2016. Again, it's Merlot lead at 50%, uh, with 31% Cabernet Franc and 19% Petit Verdot. Um, so again, you'll probably pick up a little bit more on the floral notes from uh, from the 2016. Um, and if we tie back to our vintage, um, this was uh, again not quite as as hot as our 2015 year was. So um, when we smell this, you know, maybe we won't get quite as much uh, of, a, of a pungency to it. But it's definitely more expressive than the 16, that's for sure. So I'd say that the red fruits are shining through a little bit more on this one. Um, cherry, that strawberry, raspberry. I'm getting that pomegranate again. Um, just that really, really bright red fruit. And what I'm also getting on this one is, uh, it's like a mocha or a, a dark chocolate. Yeah, that chocolate's really popping on the palate here. Wow. Um, pretty grippy tannins again, but they're, they're a little bit, I would say silkier than, than uh, the 16. The 16 is still quite, quite rough. Um, these ones, you feel them, but they're a bit softer in your mouth. 
Um, not not as soft as 15, but again, this is two years uh, two years younger. Um, get a little bit more vanilla. Um, again, sim similar oak oak aging for for these two years. So the the 15 only spent 18 months in barrel, but the 16 and 17 spent 21 months. So a fair bit more time. Um, so we're we're gonna get more of that toastiness coming through from the barrel than we than we would on the 15 for sure. Um, and the barrels also contribute to some of that structural component. So you get tannins from the barrel as well. Um, and those will definitely help mellow that wine out over time. Um, yeah, so those are the three years. Completely different wines. Uh, you, you definitely pick up some, some similar characteristics in each of them, uh, which you would expect. Um, but each one is, is very, very expressive and reflective of, of the vintage. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we actually spent some time talking about what, what impact that has on the wines. Um, and then in terms of where our fruit comes from, uh, we source our Merlot and our Cabernet Franc from a vineyard in uh, North Oliver. Uh, and the Petit Bordeaux and the Cabernet Sauvignon that's uh, in this blend, it's on its own for the other years, but we included it in the blend here. Uh, both of those are from the soy. So uh, same vineyards, um, same growers. It's just nice to kind of see the differences that, uh, that we get through the growing seasons. So those are the three vintages in our uh, Syndicate Vertical Tasting. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, maybe we turn it over to some questions if we have uh, any questions or comments. Yes, there are questions coming in. Uh, first question is from Jane. She's wondering if she can still buy a survival kit. Yes, uh, the survival kits, um, they're still available on our website. Uh, I think as long as we get them shipped out by the end of the day tomorrow, we should be pretty certain that they'll arrive in time for next Thursday's tasting. Um, but just on that note, uh, we ship generally with ATS and Canada Post. And uh, because of the, the sheer volume of online uh, retail right now, um, all the delivery companies are experiencing some delays. Um, having said that though, it really depends on where it's going to. So if you're in, in BC, Alberta, sort of Saskatchewan, um, it really is only taking two or three days. So hopefully there's time. And Ontario, probably closer to a week I would give for that one. So if, uh, if you're from further out east and you want a survival pack, I'd get your orders in soon. Uh, Corinne is asking, is this the new tasting room? Uh, it, it is actually. Um, we're, we're still uh, in the throes of renovations here. We, we had planned to open up our tasting room for the Easter long weekend, um, but once COVID hit, uh, we thought our time would be better spent working in the vineyard rather than doing the, the last bit of renovations. So um, we will be ready as soon as uh, the, uh, the bands are lifted and uh, we're able to entertain guests here, but this is uh, part of our new tasting room. Uh Troy wants to know um, about the pencil shaving notes. Were you just checking to see if everyone was paying attention with that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, the pencil shaving is, a, a, again, that's, a, that's more of a, um, a Cabernet Sauvignon um, character. Um, it can be quite subtle. So um, I think if, if you know that it's a character of the Cab Sauv, the only vintage of this wine that has that is a 2015, um, you can dig through it, um, but in 16 and 17, we bottled our Cabernet Sauvignon as its own under our Unsanctioned series. So um, I think for, for a nuanced character like, like graphite or pencil shavings, um, you're, you're better to find those in a varietal wine rather than a blend. Uh, Bailey is asking, out of the three that you tasted tonight, which is your favorite? Oh, um, I'd say in terms of their, their, their readiness to drink, uh, the 2015 um, for sure, it's, it's really in a good spot right now. Um, last summer actually, we, uh, we, we hosted a group of people from, from Calgary and uh, we opened up uh, five different vintages going all the way back to 2012, so 12 through 16 I think. Um, and uh, the 14 vintage uh, was probably my least favorite of all the vintages of the syndicate that I've made. Um, but then when we opened it last year, it blew my socks off. So um, the, these wines, they, they really do evolve. Um, you know, uh, the, 20, the 2016, um, 
I don't think it's in a great spot right now. It doesn't mean it's not a good wine. It just means that it's not really ready. It's not at its peak uh, consumption period. So, um, you know, it, a lot of that is personal preference as well. If you, if you like grippier, fuller bodied wines, then then drink a big wine younger and you'll, you'll, you'll get those sensations. But uh, for me, I think the 15 is just in a, in a perfect spot right now. A uh, question from Chadwick. How long would it take to get a delivery to Montreal? Uh, I'd say probably bet on a week. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Um, I'll just close off. Uh, so next week we will be back on our, our, our regular schedule of uh, tastings and Omerta is going to be on deck. So if you don't have a bottle of this yet, please get your orders in. It is a stunning wine and I can't wait to share that one with you guys next week. So cheers. Hope you guys have a good week. See you next week.